Hi everyone. Um, my name is Jana Nevalainen and I'm from Ministry of Finance, Finland. I'm executing the semantic interoperability governance model and it includes the national interoper uh, interoperability platform which gives the tools and methods, methods specifying and managing interoperable data and information content. The interoperability platform is built uh, on the principles of linked data. And then we have uh, Jakub um, Klimek, and uh, he is from Ministry of Interior Czech Republic. He is a linked and open data expert uh, who works on Czech data standards and the Czech national open data catalog. In Norway, the LDS uh, work has been led by special director for information manage management in the Bronnesund Register Center, Mr. David Norheim. As Mr. Norheim unfortunately was not able to present himself, the work will be presented by a member of Mr. Norheim's team, uh, Steiner Skogemo. Mr. Skogemo is concerned about how we can enable an open, democratic and decentralized web of data and believe linked data technologies are crucial to achieve this. And he uh, has a dream that Tim Berners Lee, the inventor of the World Wide Web, one day will receive the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> and last but not least, we have Peter Prun Andersen from Danish Agency for Dig Digitization, the person that presented the idea of the Linked Data Showcase for the ISA Square Coordination Group and by that started the work we are talking about today. And now I give the floor to our speakers. Jakub, the uh, floor is yours. Thank you, Jana. Uh, good morning. Um, I'll start um, the presentation, if I can start the presentation. <laughs> Okay, so this is the wrong order of the presentations. So if I could <laughs> get my uh, my slide deck, okay. click through it. Through. I will spoil all the surprises there. <laughs> now it's not working at all. Ah, right. Okay, so let me start without the slides and uh, they will catch up eventually. So, uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, the, t the main topic uh, I want to talk about today and start with is uh, data interoperability. Um, <clears throat> this is the ultimate goal we want to achieve. Um, and uh, to achieve this goal, uh, there are some prerequisites. And one of those prerequisites um, is linked data. And, uh, let me just quickly remind you uh, of what linked data actually is. So uh, let me illustrate the problem on a classical uh, data interoperability problem. Let's have two data sets uh, about uh, movies. And uh, those are those data sets. And uh, we can see our first interoperability problem right there. One is a relational data set, one is a hierarchical data set, one uses CSV as the data format, one uses JSON as the data format, and anyone who wants to work with those data sets together needs to work with two different data models, two different data formats. But the problems don't end there, because um, what if I want to point to my friend, uh, this actor here, I say, okay, take a look at actor one, two, three, four. He's really cool. And uh, the first reaction I get is, uh, what one, two, three, four you mean? Do you mean the one, two, three, four in the Tableau data or in the hierarchical data? What do you mean? The problem here is that uh, these identifiers are simply not enough to identify things in the data. Um, if I point to the actor I mean, I immediately get another question. How do I get the data and where is the data stored? The problem here is that this is not obvious from the identifiers, right? 
Another problem here is uh, you may have noticed by now that the ta table headers is actually the, the, it's in Czech, right? So if you don't speak Czech, you don't understand what's there. I do speak Czech, but there is still an issue. Uh, that's because the third column actually uh, can be translated both as stars as or stars in, a big difference in meaning, and I'm not sure which one is actually um, used here. And that's not all. Um, the final problem we have here is that clearly the two data sets are somehow connected. Uh, but there is Joker, right, the movie, and in our second data set we have two Joker movies, each with a very different rating. So one I would go to see, one probably not, uh, but I don't know which one is which from this first data set. Okay, so here come linked data. It's a technical interoperability solution which helps us with exactly these problems. Um, this is the state of the data which is not linked. So each data item has a different shape, it can be accessed using a different access method. Uh, there is maybe a proprietary linking down somewhere in the data, but it's not standardized. And uh, if we apply linked data uh, to this problem, we get something that uh, we can now see on the right. It's, it looks better, it looks more interoperable, but uh, still uh, it's not the ideal, which, which should be that uh, if we have truly interoperable data, we can work with the data from various data sources with the same effort as if the data was actually one consistent data source. Um, so clearly we need something more. Um, and uh, yet again, a quick reminder what the technical uh, solutions linked data offers. So first is uh, globally unique identifiers. I always know which item I am identifying because I use URLs for that. Uh, based on those identifiers, I'm actually able to uh, touch the data, get the data. Um, I don't have to ask where to get the data. It's all there in the identifier. Uh, the data is in a unified data model, RDF, um, so I don't have to deal with hierarchical and relational and uh, some more. And finally, there is a standardized way of how to link from one data entity to another. So it's clear where do I link to, where do I link from and what I mean by that link. Well, if we apply all these techniques, what we get is exactly this. So it is better, it is more interoperable, but it is still not what we need. Uh, there is still too much variables. Um, so we apply something else. We apply semantic interoperability solutions. An example of such solutions are the ISA square core vocabularies. So if I take a data set from the Czech Republic and I take a data set from Belgium, uh, they are about the same stuff. And uh, I apply core vocabularies to those. I get even closer to interoperable data, but I am still not there. This is... Uh, Reminder that uh, this diagram is something uh, you probably already know. It's the linked open data cloud. Uh, and let me note that in the linked data showcase here, we don't deal only with open data. We also link with, uh, deal with uh, closed data. So we have to deal with security and access control. Right. So uh, now that we know what we can work with, uh, what is linked data and what is semantic operability uh, solutions uh, that, that we can work with already nowadays. Let's take a look from the consumer's perspective here. So what, what a consumer of such data can expect from the data uh, that would benefit him. Uh, and let me illustrate this on uh, this example, and sorry for the typo there. On a map, show Belgian and uh, Czech companies working in general public, public administrations. So this is a simple task that should be simple to solve uh, when we have all uh, that we just discussed. So we have the ISA square core vocabularies for businesses and for locations. We have a shared code list which contains the item general public administration as an economic activity uh, that is assigned to a certain company. And we have linked data from Czechia and we have linked data from Belgium and they have exactly the same content. So it would seem that everything is in order, everything is perfect. And um, so back to the question, show Belgian and Czech companies on a map. And uh, please all take a moment, imagine what this solution of this question should look like. 
I guess we can all agree that it should look like something like this. So a map with the Czech Republic, with Belgium, and with all the companies working in public administration on that map. Right. So we tried to uh, get this result. This was our vision. This was what I thought could, uh, could work. So what we, did we actually achieve? Well, there is a piece of good news, because we achieved exactly this. Uh, <laughs> So this is good news. However, there is also bad news. And bad news is that it was far from, uh, far from easy. We um, encountered lots of obstacles along the way. Um, I will show you just some of them. So the first one was findability. We actually had problems finding the data um, that would help us solve our task. Because if we searched the European Data Portal for business registries, we got 70,000 data sets. And that's way too much to go through to see which are relevant and which are not. Um, the problem is that uh, in the European Data Portal, we have 13 high-level topics that we can use to classify data sets. And then on the other end, we have keywords, which, which are free texts uh, assigned by the individual data publishers. And uh, they don't really help with uh, finding similar data sets. So what I would propose here um, a hot topic nowadays is uh, so-called high-value data sets. Um, and at least for those high-value data sets, if high-value means that uh, everyone should be able to find them and work with them, uh, then I would propose creating at least a code list mandatory in the European Data Portal uh, that publishers can use to tag their data sets, saying this is this type of high-value data set in uh, my national open data portal or national data portal and uh, so that everyone can use this tag in the European data portal to actually find similar data sets from various countries. Another obstacle uh, was completeness. At least in the Czech Republic there are at least five different business registries containing some data about businesses. Some of them are open, some of them are not. There are, uh, each registry has their own access methods. Each, each registry has uh, their own data format. Uh, and uh, this is basically, well, it's very hard to work with. So in the showcase, we work with um, a linked data version of those registries created by Charles University. Um, the same goes for the NACE hierarchy. That's the code list used to classify uh, companies according to their uh, economic activities. Uh, because th this one is also nowhere to be found as linked data. So we used the copy we had ourselves at the university. Um, another obstacle was consistency. We have our shared code list. That seems nice, right? But there is a Belgian extension to this code list. There is a Czech extension to the code list. There's, that's one problem. Another problem is that there is no methodology uh, of actually assigning items from this code list to the actual businesses. So a similar business in the Czech Republic would get a different set of NACE codes than the same business in Belgium, for instance, which uh, also doesn't help with the interoperability. Another problem with consistency is, OK, so um, with our linked data, data sets, we had the ISA square core vocabularies applied. However, there is still some wiggle room, which means that two data sets using the same core vocabularies are not exactly the same, which means that everyone wanting to work with this data needs to apply some additional integration effort. And uh, this is two data sets. Imagine that it's 20 or 26 data sets, and uh, not just one user, but uh, thousands of users. That's a lot of extra work. Then there are the usual problems with accessibility of Sparkle endpoints. Sparkle endpoints do time out. They do limit the numbers of results. They do crash from time to time. So uh, this is yet another obstacle we faced. And finally, there is a problem with interpretability of data. Uh, our goal was to achieve a map visualization. So we took two tools creating map visualizations. And each, each of them required a different representation of the geo coordinates. So basically, we had to do our work twice. We had to create one data set for visualization in one tool and another for visualization in another tool. So that's another uh, obstacle. If I were to sum up those obstacles, I would say 
this has to all, this all has to do with low data quality and the obstacles fall into the well-known dimensions of quality that all of us need to uh, address uh, what we did in the showcase is we applied an ETL tool to actually access the different Sparkle endpoints in different ways to get all the data and then to produce the other data sets for the visualization on a map, again, uh, at in at least two different uh, formats. Um, right, so um, this seems like... Uh, um, mostly bad news. So data quality is low, and linked data and uh, ISA square core vocabularies don't solve it. But uh, what can be done about it, right? So uh, what are the required actions here? Well, the first action is to realize this fact, that linked data and core vocabularies are simply not enough. We need to go further. And uh, some of the suggestions are create a stricter API specification for, let's say, high value data sets. Uh, which not only says how the data should look like, but also how it should be accessible, which is missing at the moment. Uh, we need to apply validation rules, for instance, Shackle, uh, so that everyone can see whether the data is or is not valid. And maybe, and this may be a bit, uh, bit radical, but maybe there should be some kind of enforcement, at least for the high value data set, data sets, saying that uh, at some point in future, if a country doesn't publish or uh, makes, um, doesn't make accessible a high value data set of certain type in a certain quality, they may not be eligible for certain types of EU funding. And maybe that would uh, push us in the right direction uh, and uh, increase the data quality. Uh, well, if there is one message I want you all to take in from my talk today, uh, it is this. Um, if we take non-linked data and we apply linked data principles and uh, core vocabularies to it, we get only halfway to the real goal of data interoperability. We really then need to focus on data quality. Linked data and core vocabularies are prerequisites. They are necessary and that's clear but they are not uh, the final solution. The final solution will be achieved when we can really work with various data sets from various data sources as if they were one consistent data set. Uh, thank you. Thank you, and next one is Steiner. Thank you. <coughs> so it's uh, already placed there. Um, uh, thank you for the introduction and uh, thank you for the opportunity to present the, the work here. Uh, I'm really excited to present how we in Brandesen Register Center has worked as part of the LDS uh, to be able to take a large step forward on actually making some of the most important data for our uh, well-functioning market and uh, efficient government available as uh, linked data. Um, so this uh, will uh, pr mostly um, talk about one of uh, Jacob's point, uh, namely addressing quality, uh, quality from the source of the data. Um, for an authority such as uh, the Brennison uh, Registry Center, offering services that gives information on individual entities is the core business uh, for our being. So uh, the main use case for uh, the businesses in Norway is to find out, is it safe to do business with this other company? Is it a real company? Who are the persons running it? What have they done? Are they always like starting and uh, stopping companies? And what's this uh, financial situation? <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Um, so uh, analytics, on the other hand, um, yeah, uh, well, analytics on the other hand can be done by third parties. Do we have to give details on the on the in individual level? Um, before this work, uh, we uh, had like ordinary APIs for two of the data sets we are talking about here, which is the business registered data and annual uh, account data. So before I talk about what we've done with it, um, I'll also just give a quick. Uh, uh, review what uh, or um, a recap of uh, what we mean by linked data, and it's uh, adding to the, uh, the principles that Jakob told. Um, there are also 
Tim Berners-Lee have also expressed it in three simple rules. So all kinds of uh, conceptual things, they have names now that start with HTTP. That's the, the using the globally unique uh, identifiers. And uh, if we use these HTTP names, we get uh, data uh, in return. And those data, they include relationships to other uh, data. So um, this is what we try to implement in our uh, data sources. And to say a bit more about them uh, and why we think it's important to go to the source here. Uh, the responsibility for different types of authoritative data is always uh, distributed. Um, and that can even be within uh, uh, an authority. Within our authority, we have several registers with several managers. <clears throat> and it can be across authorities and borders. While the use cases, uh, they often need data across those responsibilities. So for instance, business X wants to, to have data about uh, a company, uh, uh, where they are lo located, where the international headquarter is, uh, what their financial status is. So we could, of course, try to like, uh, adjust the data and the organization to the use cases, but that would be a very tough uh, job because the use cases are so many, and we can't have so many. Uh, uh, organizations at the same time, and we need to make sure that the data is uh, is closely connected to someone who is responsible and who has actually has an interest in keeping those data at a good quality, who is using them in in their business to uh, to solve uh, the business uh, is um, uh, if it just has the data for no other reason than that someone might be interested in it, then uh, the quality will go down. He has to have a, a, a really a strong interest in the data himself. Or she. Uh, sorry. Um, so um, so uh, how did we go from ordinary REST APIs to linked data? We had the original sources that was the state authority uh, mapping uh, authority. We, we, they have uh, administrative borders in Norway. Then we have two uh, sources from the Brennesen Register Center that I mentioned, the business register and the register for annual accounts. So the, one of the good news here was that uh, for the mapping authority, there were no changes because they have already uh, um, offered linked data from their production environment since 2018, and that is actually a result of the DCAT work in, uh, in the SEMIC work, uh, because uh, as part of the, the description of a data set, you want to say what's the, what's the geographical coverage of this data set, and, by, uh, and we needed somewhere to reference these uh, borders. And uh, so they uh, made this uh, 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 API to give this uh, linked data in 2018. So that's very good. But for the, uh, the business register, uh, we added the linked data uh, as part of the national data catalog register of publishers. And for the annual account, we added it to uh, another EU work, that's uh, the EU business graph project, that where we already create, created an ordinary uh, API. <clears throat> So uh, uh, like very quick, like technical, for the business register, we had four different formats that are all linked data, and uh, same for the annual accounts. And uh, the, while the administrative borders, they have only two of these uh, formats. Uh, but this is uh, not, not a problem, because uh, this, the, one of the advantages of linked data is that we don't have any loss of information uh, going back and forth between these different formats, because they all map into uh, uh, the generic RDF data model. So this um, just so shows that there's a, a bit of flexibility here. Um, when it comes to the vocabularies, <coughs> we have not been able to do so much work uh, on this as we would have wanted to, so we hope, hope to be able to do more. But still, there is quite a, a lot of reuse for the business register, where we uh, used uh, specifically the registered organization vocabulary. Uh, when it comes to the annual account, we didn't find any, uh, any um, vocabulary that fitted how we already have structured the data in the existing API. So there's mostly our own set of terms. Uh, just a few generic elements were reused from schema.org. 
Uh, and as for the administrative borders, they have used the Geo, uh, Geo Sparkle uh, a lot, and also the generic terms from these terms. So this is, um, uh, I, I was warned I shouldn't have too many slides with the turtle, although I was so looking forward to finally have, a, have one. <laughs> so, but uh, this is one where just to highlight, uh, we, we could have shown how we link the business register data to the annual account or to the uh, administrative border, but we had chosen to show how we link to the uh, uh, business register in, in uh, Belgium. So this is data for some uh, uh, excerpts of the data for a Norwegian company of, of a type where you only have a, like a limited registration in Norway, but you point to the, the uh, you have a primary registration in another country. So um, what we used here uh, is uh, this uh, yellow, uh, I, I, I didn't actually put the link here because it got so large, <laughs> but uh, there we could link to the, uh, to the um, uh, Belgian business register and this is what we uh, received when we follow that link and um, one other thing you will notice in this uh, example is that uh, in the res response we we see that the NASA codes that Jakob also presented is is following the the registered vocabulary uh, uh, um, way of setting it up while we have used just a uh, we just made our own terms for it because we weren't, we hadn't got uh, far enough to have, we only had these um, literal values for it and not the, the real identifier. So this is uh, something we have to work on. <clears throat> so this, uh, based on this, uh, we can go through the achievements and um, if you refer back to the three rules, we now have names uh, that start with HTTP for entities in the business register and the annual account re register. And when looked up, these names return standard format data. And this is the, like, uh, this is the up-to-date authoritative uh, data. There's no copy or no delay. And we haven't put it uh, somewhere else to work on it at the site. It's the, it's the uh, register data. Um, and the data returned expresses relations as HTTP links so that can be followed. <coughs> Uh, there were, of course, also challenges. I mentioned the problem of finding appropriate vocabularies and finding time to work more on the <laughs> vocabularies. Um, and uh, another important one is to find the authoritative source for linked data for businesses abroad. So we have, we got, uh, we were uh, helped by Jakob uh, to find this uh, Sparkle endpoint where we could get the data, but it, it is not the, the the business register in Belgium that offered these data at an individual level. And that therefore also the HTTP names are not like uh, something to count on for the future. <laughs> and uh, just a, a minor detail that our developers had a problem handling dates between uh, different uh, uh, components. For further work, uh, there's work on the vocabularies. Uh, and we think it might be possible to build on XPRL and XPRL GL uh, for, for a vocabulary on uh, annual account. And uh, then we have to do more on the documentation and um, uh, of our own uh, the specific terms that we have introduced. We also need to go to official addresses for the linked data endpoints because even though these are production data, they, they, we haven't like uh, announced it that this is an endpoint you can use, and you you would know why if you see the the addresses, but. Um, uh, also, we would like to enable full ac access to the full data sets that, that uh, Jakob mentioned, that we sh he should be able to take all the data and add it into his uh, use case, not like on the individual uh, level. Um, and then uh, we would like to know more about the uh, authoritative uh, um, sources for linked data for businesses in other countries. And finally, accessing non-public data and adding authentication and authorization is a really, really important uh, uh, work forward. So the final slide is just uh, for reference for later, so you can see the links to the work and the uh, source code. It's all open source. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Steiner. And uh, our last speaker is Peter.
Yes, <clears throat> thank you. I uh, should start by apologizing for my squeaky voice. It sounds like I've been on a, been on a pop crawl all night. I haven't, <laughs> I promise. Um, so now that we have heard from um, Jakob and Steiner about work related to the showcase, maybe it's time to talk about why we did the showcase and what it contains. Uh, <clears throat> Um, as many other organizations, we at the Danish Agency for uh, Digitization realized that there was clear benefits of, of using uh, linked data. We had the uh, RDF as a proper, good, solid foundation for um, describing data in a unified way. And we saw the benefits of having uh, one or more uh, linked data APIs to create easier integration between uh, uh, different sources. So we set out to um, uh, create some linked data enabled uh, registries for ourselves, uh, but found that um, there was a lot of things that were lagging. We didn't find the community that we expected. We didn't find uh, anyone else that we could relate to had done the same thing on a government level. Um, and uh, of course, no, that meant also that there was no useful linked data sources that we could uh, use. But most importantly, the lack of uh, solution providers with the proper uh, linked data skills was uh, a major stumble point for us. Um, and by uh, solution providers here, yeah, I'm not talking about uh, small one-person companies, but companies that has a, uh, a size that will guarantee that they will exist in five years with a staff that will guarantee that if, if our product, if our solution scales, they can scale with it. And um, no, no uh, environment, no solu uh, solution providers also meant that there was no uh, peer community that could, uh, could give us advice. Uh, <clears throat> and we, we see this as a sort of, or the major issue here is um, the, the chicken and egg uh, dilemma between uh, not having a solution provider uh, that you can uh, get help from, and thus you don't uh, start um, a, 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 um, a process where uh, solution providers um, has, can, can see the benefit of, of uh, investing in, in linked data technology. And we intended to uh, change this into a, a positive loop. So um, adding more solutions uh, would give more value. The more, the more sources, linked data sources that we have, the more value. Uh, that is for each user to enter the linked data community. Um, and thus, there would be a, an interest for solution providers to invest in linked data technology. And the more solution providers, the, more, the easier it would be to join the linked data uh, community. And thus, we would hope that we could start a positive loop. Uh, <clears throat> So what's, what's in it, really? Um, there's two major aims with, with this um, linked data showcase. Uh, one is, uh, as I just uh, told about, to, to plant the seeds um, that will hopefully expand into a, a larger linked data environment. And the other is to help to create the community that can uh, give answers to a lot of those questions that you have when you start uh, the process of entering the linked data world. Uh, example, um, how do we do with our backends? Do we, do we leave our data as relational databases and uh, change it on the fly uh, with, uh, on, when people query it, change it to RDF? Do we uh, copy and, and, and go with both in relational and, and a triple store, or do we uh, go pure uh, triple store solutions? And what are the cost and the risk, and when should we do uh, one thing and, uh, and not the other? 
And on the uh, interoperability layer, there's also a lot of questions. What kind of, uh, what type of API should we use? Should we go Spark, Link Data Platform? Should we uh, use GraphQL uh, with JSON-LD or brew our own? Um, and, and when is uh, each of these API types uh, proper for what kind of solutions? <clears throat> and of course, there's a lot of questions about security and privacy. If you can jump from one data source to another, how do you keep track of that? How do you keep security? Um, <clears throat> and a, finally, a, a, a question that's often overlooked is the, um, the user interface. Um, when you have a, a linked data oil, you might end up receiving data or reference to data that you didn't expect, that your application is not built to, to show. Um, so what do you do about that? Um, do, you, do you just put this, this new um, data into a horrible spreadsheet? Um, or, or can you find a way to present it so you can merge it into, your, into a dynamic application? Um, that's one of the questions we would like to uh, showcase to, to give answers to. So, <clears throat> in short, um, this showcase is about um, creating a uh, cross-border linked data environment, um, at first based at, uh, on base registries available in, in uh, member states um, and Norway. Uh, and we intend to use both open data and access restricted data. The, the, the latter point is extremely important. Uh, if most of the uh, linked data you see out there uh, is linked open data, so um, they, they don't give us answer uh, to the questions about how to handle security uh, and privacy. We also want this showcase to uh, be a guidance for uh, member states, organizations, on how to uh, build uh, a linked data architecture. Um, and we're doing this in an um, easy step-by-step -step, uh, approach, starting with open data and gradually uh, adding more and more to the project. So currently, <clears throat> we have, uh, we started this, this was proposed uh, almost a year ago, um, so we have we've had a, a slow start. We are finding our traction now. We have a reference architecture. We have a um, currently internal uh, wiki uh, about what to do and our, uh, that describes our learning. And we have uh, this uh, linked data pilots. Uh, <clears throat> and, um, Currently, the, the reference architecture looks like this, and that is currently. Um, this will only be one reference architecture out of many. We intend to create reference architectures for each use case, and we will most likely change this as it, as it looks now. Um, and the uh, wiki we have has uh, 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 trying to give um, um, answers to questions like these, what kind of formats do you uh, present your data in? Um, if you sh should use Shaggle, how should you do it? And um, how, how should you proceed from going from your current data to linked data? Um, and, uh, <clears throat> so, um, the pilot we are creating um, is um, a proof of concept of the reference architecture that we are building. And we are uh, trying to work with, uh, well, any member state that has a, a data source we can use. Um, right now we are um, confined to three member states participating, the Czech Republic and uh, Belgium 
and again, no way. Um, we have um, eight data sources uh, for uh, legal entities for with spatial data sets. Um, and this, this I've, I've, uh, uh, I'm showing you to to show that even though we are lifting data to uh, to RDF, uh, we are not we are not uh, pressing down uh, a one size fits all for these registries. Uh, as you can see, as I, I hope you can see, each registry has its 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 own sets of vocabularies. There's only one common vocabulary uh, among them, and that's a small one. And that's uh, one of the major points here. We should leave uh, data be um, as they are. We shouldn't try to to uh, create a one-size-fits-all world, world. One of the uh, uh, takeaways that we, we, we uh, have from a, a, an illustration uh, like this is that what we could do, we could make a spin-off of the uh, linked data showcase that tries to map the, the uh, vocabularies. Uh, the vocabularies we have here are not uh, very good at describing how they map uh, to the other uh, uh, vocabularies. And that's lacking. That's extremely useful when you have to uh, enter this linked data world. So that might be a spin-off of the uh, showcase. So uh, the linked data showcase is meant to go on forever, almost. Uh, our funding will end in a year time, but we will uh, continue on a, hopefully, um, yeah, um, uh, uh, what, uh, uh, winning, winning with willing member states. Um, we could use more uh, participants. So, so I hope you will join us, uh, either with your uh, data or with your knowledge, or even better, with your questions. We can use it all. So, thank you. Thank you. So, um, are there specific actions being taken in your countries to increase cross-border interoperability of linked data? Jakub, would you like to start? Well, uh, let me just start with a statement <laughs> that in the Czech Republic there are, um, as to my knowledge, four official linked data sources. Uh, which means uh, that there cannot be much effort done on top of those. However, there is at least something. One of those official data sources or linked data sources is the Czech National Open Data Portal, which uses, of course, DKET AP, the um, semantic interoperability solution by um, uh, the ISA Square. And um, uh, this one is uh, used to actually get the data from the National Open Data Portal to the European Data Portal, which can be viewed as an example of a cross-border um, linked data interoperability um, thing. Thank you. Star. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm sorry to say that uh, we have the, the same example in Norway, but it, it seems to become um, a more and more important example as we have uh, expanded our national data catalog to uh, extend uh, on the data set descriptions but also include um, descriptions of API as a, like a um, primary citizen of the, the catalog and uh, info we're working on information model uh, uh, and having adding that to the cat catalog and we have uh, uh, it is also a concept catalog and all these underlying uh, standards are uh, based on the vocabulary work of uh, the CEMIC and the uh, linked data technologies and, and that is in order to ensure that we can um, uh, harvest the, the local sources of the different authorities and link the, uh, across these uh, sources so the data uh, set may, might be served by an API and the 
the in information model uh, or is uh, um, re uh, represents the representation of a certain API, and, and there's um, to understand the data, you need to look at these concepts, etc. So, so at, uh, through the, uh, the data national data catalog, which is the whole reason for it being linked data, is to, to be able to export it to the EU data catalog. Uh, that is, I think, the main cross-border work uh, as of now. Mm. Thank you. Do you want Peters? Just, just to say that we, we don't have any. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Steiner, you mentioned about APIs. So, do you have pros and cons of APIs access to linked data? Would you like to start? Um, do you have pros and cons of APIs access to linked data? Um, yeah. I, um, um, we we know uh, th because we um, this is again back to the national data catalog that when we wanted to add uh, a, uh, an API catalog there we started the dialogue with all the authorities what what are you doing related to APIs and we see that they are very API focused and they have a tool sets and they have organization related to developing API so so being a part of that uh, movement makes it easier to like uh, try to to, to get the uh, traction, I think, because if you come and, and uh, say, I'll ask them to uh, put away the API work uh, uh, and add some some totally new technology that I never heard about, it's it's much harder. But if we can make try to convince them that you yeah, make an API, but please make sure you add these uh, you have these HTTP names for everything. You make sure that you relate to other uh, APIs through the HTTP uh, uh, names and that you use these standard formats, I think that will be, uh, and, and uh, have it in addition to those formats that your developers are in desperately need of so that you can, can build gradually. I think that that's one of the advantages of the, uh, the API. Uh, and then uh, it will also be easier to add an, uh, when you have different sources with different, uh, that offer linked data from different APIs, it will be easier to also show the benefits from those technologies that can can do uh, something with all these data across all the APIs with the uh, Sparkle endpoints and um, other technologies. So they 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 have to like live together. I think uh, we can't have uh, is, uh, is this uh, old the TV show Love and Marriage? You can't have one without the other. Or? Jakob. Uh, <clears throat> right. I think this is uh, mainly um, the question of. Uh, which uh, use case we prioritize because in my opinion uh, the data sets should be published definitely as data dumps and definitely as uh, APIs where maybe the term API may be a bit confusing but what I imagine as API is like access to a single data point about uh, for instance a single company um, but the important thing is uh, that uh, we have use cases from all of these categories. We have use cases where I have an application where I show some data about the company and I want to take some additional data from this and that data source about that company. Well, for that, I don't need to download a few gigabytes of data to get just one data point. I need access to that one um, data point that is out there. So for that, I need uh, an API. Um, but at the same time, I can have a use case for the same data set that requires some analytical work. Um, for instance, uh, my example in, uh, in the presentation, there was show me all companies working in public administration. And for that, if, I only, if the only thing I have to work with is the API, I need to go through the list of all companies in that API uh, and uh, then pick those that fit uh, the economic activity that I'm searching for, uh, which will overload the API probably and it will take a long time to do, or I will download a data dump containing all the data and I will do the analytical use case on top of that myself. And uh, data dumps and uh, access to um, individual data points, of course, are not the only types of APIs of linked data. They are, um, types in the middle somewhere, like uh, linked data fragments, for instance. Um, so there is a whole scale of uh, different APIs for different use cases. And uh, I think we should always think um, of all of them. 
ideally. Steiner, yeah, I just forget. I got to mention also that uh, when we um, when we have uh, APIs for linked data that is uh, like building on the uh, or ordinary API, we also get a lot of for free when it comes to authentication and authorization because that is what being worked on and they have come far um, on those subjects uh, already. Thank you, Peter. <coughs> we we uh, we don't have an official. Um, um, recommendation about uh, APIs right now, but on a personal level, I would say, if you already have RDF sources, uh, use uh, link data. <clears throat> link data platform as your default. And if not, if you're entering this, uh, take, a, take a closer look at GraphQL um, with added directives. Um, that will bring you a long way. Uh, using that API, you can query both triple stores and uh, normal uh, REST-based uh, uh, APIs, relational databases. So take a look at that. Thank you. So in, I have the tablet too, so I'm checking, um, do you have any questions here? And, okay, this is the wrong one. <laughs> Do you think if identifying actual businesses through legal entity identifier would help in solving obstacles in finding the correct entities, we were looking at ensuring com completeness and consistency? And uh, legal entity identifier is the unique identifier for unambiguously identifying legal entities on global level. Do uh, that, that, that sounds like a good idea if you could uh, agree on having that as part of all the business registers uh, so that they... Um, uh, um, but uh, it must be uh, in, in co uh, um, cooperation with uh, uh, it, uh, an identifier that actually resolves into a request to the source uh, of the business registers uh, as well. I think uh, it sounds like a good idea, and I think we're using the, in um, s a similar concept for the uh, legis legislation in Norway. So all legislation has this uh, uh, unique identifier that is uh, uh, in accordance with uh, some global standard. Yeah, I think this is definitely the way to go. Um, there is one warning, though. Every time we assign a new type of identifier to anything, there absolutely needs to be someone who issues those identifiers and then manages them. Uh, but if this is somehow ensured, um, then uh, I see uh, the European identifier as a good approach to this. Thank you. Okay. Um, here is actually this is more like a comment. Uh, publishing data as linked data, RDF, is not enough if this is no shared semantics. Data, data models should be published uh, as application profiles that explicitly defin defines um, the publish published graphs. Do you agree? Um, well, uh, uh, both, uh, yes, uh, that would be the best at uh, long term, but uh, we still um, um, as, as I said, we would like to do more uh, more work on the vocabularies and make sure they are well defined and related to other vocabularies. And I think that is the, one of the advantages of linked data that you can have, like trans um, what do you call it uh, um, uh, transformation architecture, where you're you're at some steps on the way towards where, at the level where you have all. You agree on all these uh, shared vocabularies. You can at least say that the, the parts of my data that are similar to your data they refer to the, the uh, shared vocabulary at that part uh, at least, and then uh, you can uh, reuse the data. Uh, not necessarily uh, um, uh, the example from Jakob was on the the NAS uh, codes that there were there were um, local. Uh, uh, add-ons to the code set and then you can't necessarily map 
directly between those uh, local uh, add-ons, but you can find uh, uh, at a more higher level, uh, you can find some uh, relation that makes it possible to reuse the data anyway at some point. And that can be achieved also with those more high level uh, shared vocabularies. Peter, could you have? Yeah, I would just say that I agree completely with the comments uh, and, and uh, application profile catalog is extremely important. We, we are we're building it in, in, in Denmark for our vocabularies and applications. So, yes, that's important. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, one comment regarding uh, this uh, cross-border interoperability uh, via application profiles. Um, I think it's a good idea, and uh, I think we always need to uh, take a look at the data we are publishing uh, from the consumer's perspective. So if I am the consumer who wants to consume the similar data sets from various countries and each country uses a different application profile, uh, then uh, I won't be happy as the creator of the application unless there is a machine readable way of actually getting the same representation of maybe a subset of data from each of the countries uh, but in a unified uh, form. Because then I can build an application which, uh, using just one format, actually um, uses the data from all the countries. And if I need to go into more detail, which is maybe not covered by this uh, universal subset, uh, then, of course, I need to go to the application profile. But if there are at least machine-readable links from the application profiles to the base specification, then I would be happy. Thank you. And there is a question. Your views, uh, views uh, <laughs> on linked data and security. Uh, so, so you view uh, on linked data and security. Uh, okay, so linked data builds on top of uh, current web technologies. So we have HTTP, we have URLs, we have RDF. Uh, so when uh, we view security, there are of course many layers of security, uh, but of course all the security um, measures that are being taken at the current web of documents can be also applied to the linked uh, data, the, to, to the web of data, because uh, since the web of data is based also on access to resources based on HTTP, all the security measures uh, which are applicable to um, the web of documents can be also applied to the web of data. However, of course, we need to keep in mind that uh, some of the security measures applied uh, in the web of documents um, require um, that uh, there is a human part to this. So someone fills in a username and password or someone um, does a two-factor authentication or something like that. And uh, if we want to work with linked data programmatically, we need to think about uh, those, uh, those measures if they are doable for a machine-based access to, uh, to the data. Um, yeah, as, as Jakob said, there we can reuse um, uh, the existing technologies for, uh, like I was also mentioned, the um, uh, securing uh, APIs and um, what, what you need for, for uh, large-scale interoperability is that you need to somehow need you need to identify those who have access. You need to know who has the authorization, so you need some kind of uh, cross uh, interoperability on the the roles and mandate uh, level, which is typically in only implemented at a national level. Um, but uh, there's, there's one uh, specific case in, in Norway. We would uh, we have unique identifiers uh, for businesses that we can use and uh, use as HTTP, add into the HTTP name so that they are linkable. But uh, uh, but we can't do the same with the identifiers we have for persons, so the, because the, those are not. Um, uh, we are not allowed to publish them as uh, data, and so they, they can't be uh, part of the uh, the links uh, in the same way. So we have to solve that uh, uh, in in another way. But uh, on the coming from the other side, I was here in Helsinki at the My Data conference a few weeks ago, and it um, they are uh, there were some really interesting presentation about uh, how they worked on um, 
the problem is I don't know exactly the name of the technologies, but I think it was they called it DIDs, the, the digital, uh, distributed uh, identities, uh, and then uh, verifiable claims. And the uh, interesting thing there is that uh, when you want to when you implement the uh, security technology, that is also some kind of like shared vocabulary in 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 those uh, technologies. You have to be sure you you talk about the same things in those few. Uh, data that is being exchanged, um, and they actually used uh, linked data technologies as part of the specification for these um, uh, these uh, security uh, mechanisms. So that is uh, that was something that uh, surprised me. But I, 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 they are written as part of uh, W3C work, and uh, and they use uh, linked data especially, specifically to enable uh, um, like a globally un uh, understanding of. What is a person? What is an identifier, etc.? So I think the, uh, we can reuse existing technologies for um, for securing uh, linked data. But we could also use linked uh, link data to enable new technologies for security. Thank you. Uh, actually, the, here's a question to Jacob. Um, would you have achieved uh, the interesting results being obligated to use open source only? Actually, we used open source only for this. So, yeah, sure. <laughs> I would be able to achieve that. Good. <laughs> Uh, well, well, actually, let me clarify this. Uh, I am not sure at the moment that the Tableau, which I used for the main visualization, is open source. But the second one we used, uh, QGIS, I think this one is open source. So maybe the visualization uh, would... Uh, it is not? Tableau not, but QGIS... Yeah, so I, th I think it is, but uh, okay, not sure. <laughs> uh, if I were forced to, uh, well, not use any of those visualization tools, um, then at least I would have all the data ready for visualization just using open source tools. And uh, then there we, we could use something like OpenStreetMaps and tools around OpenStreetMaps uh, that are definitely open source and uh, use those for visualization. So the visualization part could be a bit tricky, but the data processing part is all open source. Okay, thanks. Um, what kind of support do you currently miss and would like to see from the European Commission to help with increasing linked data quality in your country? Who would like to start? <laughs> uh, right, so as I mentioned in my presentation, uh, currently uh, we have the specifications of core vocabularies uh, for semantic interoperability. Um, the problem is uh, that, uh, well, let's say base registries, they are implemented by software suppliers for the public administration. And uh, there are not many people in public administration who actually know a lot about linked data, semantic inter interoperability, and uh, how to specify this in a public contract for the suppliers in a way that uh, would uh, achieve interoperable results. Um, so in that case, the supplier might deliver some, something which uh, is not that interoperable. And uh, then the question is whether there is someone in the public administration actually able to see this and able to push the supplier in the right direction. So maybe one kind of support that we could get would be uh, like tips or, or maybe some templates uh, for public contracts of suppliers saying, okay, you want a interoperable solution delivered by a supplier, then don't forget to include this, 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 and this into your public contract. Um, this could be one, uh, one sort of thing that uh, maybe could be the same for whole Europe at least maybe on the technical level. Of course, the actual data in that um, system would be different, uh, but at least something would be uh, united. Thank you. What about Peter? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't think it's, it's a matter for the uh, Commission as such. 
it's a matter for uh, each organization. They should uh, be aware that data is important, data is of value, and the quality of data um, is extremely important to them. So they should start looking at that and take care of that data. Stella? Uh, I have to admit I'm um, a bit uh, out of uh, my expertise here, but uh, I think also if um, as we we are uh, all working on the different uh, solution building blocks that are uh, across Europe, like uh, the e-delivery and uh, um, I'm probably saying something wrong here, but on the on the international authentication uh, solutions, etc. And uh, maybe if if all those solutions also had the, the like implemented the three rules of um, uh, linked data. Then it would be <laughs> we will st uh, every, more people would get to know about the uh, technology and see the advantages. So that might be uh, also a possibility. Or, or else I think um, I, I agree with my fellow uh, panelists here. Thank you. Oh. Or maybe one more point uh, regarding um, the core vocabularies. Uh, right now, the core vocabularies have the form of a uh, document um, and a specification, and not all of them have, for instance, a set of shackle rules that would uh, um, like say if the data is actually what is expected or, or not. So if I implement uh, my system and I say, okay, I, I apply, um, let's say, the location core vocabulary in my system, uh, we saw uh, in the examples that I gave that uh, this statement alone doesn't guarantee that those two data sets will be interoperable. This basically says, okay, somehow the creator of the system knew about the location vocabulary and somehow they implemented it. Uh, but the question is uh, how and uh, whether it was in the same way and probably it was not. So maybe um, for future core vocabularies, or maybe even the existing ones, some validation service would be nice, that the companies could uh, upload their data and see uh, if uh, the data is understood as was it intended by uh, the authors of the specifications. This validator could also have a, a form of a proof of concept application on top of the data. So let's say for core location vocabulary, I would see the locations on a map, for instance. It's simple, but it would, uh, it would say that, yes, this data is interoperable because we understand it uh, according to the specification. Yeah, I think uh, that was um, a very good idea. We are now working on uh, our, our revision of our national profile of the the DCAT application profile, and we decided to, that we need to make uh, a shackle, uh, shackle in order to reduce the time where the other uh, authorities spend when to, to like see is it working. And we try to import it; it doesn't work, uh, etc. So that if you have these uh, shackle rules, then we can uh, know that in advance. And in, in, it would be a very good if that uh, if in most of that shackle was already written as part of the, the, the uh, core vocabulary, so we can only add for the uh, eventual uh, changes that we have uh, to ours. That was a very good idea. Thank you. I think we have time for one question, because there's time up, so <laughs> I'm looking over there. Um, Uh, how to empower with proper skills public and non-public workers who produce data on a day-to-day basis but are not tech savvy and how to empower um, citizens to understand linked data? Who would like to start? Peter? <clears throat> I don't think the citizens uh, has a need for uh, understanding linked data. Um, no one has really except those of us who are doing the work behind the scene. Uh, linked data should be invisible. It should just be um, a way that your applications uh, provide you with uh, data that you need when you need it. Um, so I, I'm not sure that you need special skills for that. You need um, a, a developer community that knows uh, how to use the linked data how to present it in a uh, good way. You need really good usability experts, but you don't need to uh, educate the users. Um, I, I think uh, Peter is right. I just uh, thought that 
maybe the the citizens would understand the linked data concept perfectly because it's about enabling the same for the machines that we people have been doing since uh, the World Wide Web burned out, that we, we read something and we see something that we need more information about and we click on the link and then we get more information and we click on the link and I think they understand that concept perfectly so now we just have to enable the machines in the same way. Um, yes, definitely. Link data is not for, uh, well, every citizen, right? Link data is a technology for uh, people developing applications for citizens. Um, therefore, a citizen will probably not demand uh, the use of link data because they don't know what link data is and that's fine. Uh, however, um, public administrations, for instance, could demand um, link data from uh, let's say, um, um, about, about data from individual towns in, in their countries. And uh, um, then it is about education of uh, technical people responsible for working with data. So um, what can be done, of course, is teaching the uh, experts, uh, IT experts, about um, new web technologies uh, at universities so that the experts know that these technologies exist uh, and they can uh, demand them on data owners when they are building applications. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I'm just looking to time in the tablet, so... <laughs> um, are, they, um, yeah. are there any uh, plans of involving application or solution developers in the pilot? Or if you are already involving them, what is their feedback on the usability of linked data? Um, yeah, in in the work we've done, we, it's the same team that is uh, has been working on the national data catalog. That uh, uh, two of them has been working on the implementation uh, here, and um, one of them knew this technology in advance, uh, and uh, one I think was new. But he, I haven't heard any like uh, yeah, I mentioned this this date format problem, but uh, except for that, I haven't heard like big complaints about this being uh, really hard, but they, uh, as, as I mentioned, they, they, I don't think they had the oversight that they knew where to go to look for the, where's the most relevant vocabularies, how, uh, how do we choose between the uh, vocabularies, etc. So that, I think that is some of the knowledge that is uh, here among people that, who've been working with linked data for many years. They, they like, um, um, more or less intuitively know where to go and uh, how to find the, the relevant uh, resources. So I think that's a important thing with the link data showcase, as Peter mentioned, that it should be like a resource. The Wikipedia sh wiki should be a resource to find th th that kind of information. Yeah, um, we, we, we haven't um, put it on our agenda right now, but as, as I showed in my slides, the need for a more dynamic application is there. And we will have to address that down the line and in include developers and usability experts in, in that. Um, yes, uh, we need to um, get to know some people like this and get them involved in the showcase, I think, uh, because we haven't so far. Um, and uh, generally to the question of usability of linked data by people who design applications. Um, it typically goes like this. The first time they see linked data, they are terrified and they say, this is not usable. I cannot use this to build my applications. I need uh, JSON that I can parse myself and uh, work with my, myself. And uh, at that moment, uh, when uh, we, for instance, show them Okay, and can you do this for data from 20 different sources where each data uh, set will use a different format? Then they say, okay, it will be lots of work, but I can do it. Um, and then they start designing a solution internally for that specific application that assigns unique identifiers to things, that starts to link those things. Uh, they design a unique data model for those things. And basically, they design the linked data infrastructure for that particular application. And at that moment, 
when we say, okay, and this is what linked data is all about, but not for particular application, but uh, universally, then they know uh, that uh, linked data can be actually usable and useful. Uh, but it's all the matter of education, I think. Okay, thank you for the speakers and thank you for the audience, for the questions and your attentions. <laughs>